I find it hard to believe that anyone would think prepping is a cult. So, is prepping a cult? Let's get into it and see. We did a video a while back, well, a few days ago actually, called Food Shortage Factor Fearmongering. Food banks are struggling. And in response to that, I had a young lady leave a comment saying that uh, prepping is a cult. Therefore, the title to this video is Prepping a Cult. Well, I wanted to share as I walked this morning and talked about this, some of the beauty around our area here where we live. Fall's coming and the trees are changing. It's just beautiful. Uh, but to address that question, is, is prepping a cult? Um, first off, she said that uh, I had denied the faith because I had said that I was going to be prepping and that I had shown who I was following, which was my father, the devil, because I was going to be prepping. She's the only one that really responded in that stern of a manner. There was a couple other people who said things about uh, Christians shouldn't prep or Christians shouldn't worry about uh, prepping for the future because God would take care of them and they shouldn't be worrying about that kind of thing. Well, this took me by surprise, really, when this young lady said this. And if you like our videos, subscribe to our channel. Uh, hit that thumbs up button. Give us a like. Share us on social media with your friends. And uh, hit that bell icon after you subscribe to be notified of our uh, new videos we post. Thank you all. I was having a conversation with a friend last month and uh, we were discussing some biblical things and uh, the opportunity came up and I asked him was he and his family considering the upcoming fall election and the upcoming possibility of food shortages and things like that and was he doing any kind of food preparations and just instantly he got defensive and he said no just like this no i've not been hoarding and i'm not going to start hoarding food now <laughs> that end of the conversation uh it's hard to speak to folks when they answer with that kind of attitude so i hope and i'm praying that the lord gives me another opportunity to speak to this individual because this individual has been a very good friend to my wife and I and uh, has been a wonderful blessing to us many times in our life. But why he feels this way uh, is because of a lack of understanding. And there's a lot of people that don't have biblical understanding in this area and we need to help people understand that. Uh, I'm finding that more folks who don't claim to be Christians, and this is the sad part about it, more folks who don't claim to be Christians are preparing for their future than those who do claim to be Christians. Somehow or the other, a lot of folks who claim to be Christians think that it's a sin to prepare for your future. Where are you getting that? I don't know. I don't understand it. I just, it's beyond my understanding to think that people who have read the Bible, who have read the scriptures, maybe that's the problem. Maybe most of you have just listened to your preachers or your teachers or whatever and you've not read the scriptures for yourself and you don't understand them. Well, that would be a good place to start is to start reading the Old Testament and see how many famines came across the land in those days and how God had the children of Israel to prepare for them and how that Jesus spoke about who we are and how we should make preparations and how that the New Testament writers uh, worked for a living and how they did things and made preparations and what the scripture says about preparations and about uh, providing for your family. Guys and gals, 
we have a responsibility to God to provide for our families. Now, you may not believe that, and you may not understand that yet, but I hope by the end of this video that you do. Because you have a responsibility, you and I both. Now, some, some of you were smart enough to get started earlier than the rest of us. My wife and I on, have only been pre uh, prepping now for about three months or so, ever since this first thing started back in August. Wished I'd have been doing it for 20 years, but the Lord has opened our eyes, and we see now what's going on. And we're making preparations, and I hope you will too. The, you know, him, him saying that he wasn't going to be hoarding food, uh, preppers are not hoarders. Hoarders are people who uh, accumulate things to the point that they can't function correctly. They can't even get in and cook their own meals. They can't get into their bathrooms hardly. They can't get in out of their uh, bedrooms, or they just, you know, they just can't function properly. Hoarding is a mental problem. It is a it is a disorder. It's an instability of the mind in in some in some way. Uh, they have a problem. Hoarders do. Preppers don't have a, a mental problem. Preppers have a uh, the ability to foresee problems. That's the difference. Prepping is making ready and getting ready for things. You prep meals. You you prepare to fix meals. You prepare to go to town. You prepare for your children's college future. You prepare to go hunting. You buy guns. You buy every all this stuff, and you prepare to go hunting. You do all this stuff to prepare for things. But yet, when somebody talks about preparing for your future with food, you get all beside yourself. It shouldn't be that way. It just shouldn't be that way. Like I said, a lot of folk, folks are afraid to face what's coming because they know they're not ready and they're not going to be ready. We got to be patient. We got to talk to these people and try to help them get past this thing. And I'm going to try not to be real super long right here with this. And I know I'm shaking the camera a little bit and I apologize for that. But I'm trying to get to my notes. There's so much here I couldn't remember it all. And there's some scripture I want to share with you. And I can't remember all the scriptures. I'm not one of these people that remembers everything I read. And I can't quote you all the scriptures in the Bible where it came from. I don't, that stuff is not important to me to have a remembrance of a particular Bible or or book book in the Bible or a particular scripture it was written in. What's important to me is knowing it's there and what it says. We look at some scriptures to deal with prepping in this video today and I hope that you take these to heart. I'm going to try to read these kind of quick and not be too long. Proverbs 6, 6 through 8 it says, Go to the ant, you sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler. She doesn't have anybody to guide her, to overseer, her, or anybody as a ruler to tell her what she has to do. She provides meat in the summer and gathers her food in the harvest. She works all summer, works all summer to prepare the ant hill for the winter. She doesn't have anybody over her back pushing her to make her do it. They work tirelessly all summer long just to be ready for the winter. Proverbs 22, 3. A prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Think about that. If you're warned of an impending evil and you don't prepare yourself against that evil, what's wrong with you? Wake up. Listen to the common sense things that the scripture teaches us. But the simple passes on and don't prepare themselves against that evil and the evil punishes them when they come up on it. If you don't prepare yourself for food shortages, if you don't prepare yourself for these things, you're going to be hungry. And here's the kicker about this. The worst part about it is that if you're responsible for your family, your family is going to be hungry. Okay. Proverbs twenty one twenty. There is tre there is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. How about that? But a foolish man spends it up. The wise man puts it back. He preserves it against hard times. And when people have hard times, that's who they go to looking for. Is the wise man that put back the treasures and put back the oil that put back the things that are needful. 
but the foolish, not so. They don't put it back. They don't keep it put back for hard times. Proverbs 20 and 4. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore he, he shall beg in harvest and have nothing. The lazy man, let's just say it like this, the lazy man does not believe the work must be done even when it's not pleasant. We've got to do this stuff whether it's a pleasant time to do it or not. It's got to be done. We've got to do it while the doing's right. We've got to prep while the food's on the shelves. We've got to get this stuff while we can get it. Because when hunger comes, you're going to be doing without if you haven't put it back. Let's do some more verses. Now, this following verse is used by people who would discourage you not to prep for the future. It's Proverbs 27, 1. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for you know not what a day may bring forth. See there? You're not supposed to put stuff back because you might die tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow holds. So why are you prepping for tomorrow? That takes you back to the rich man whose barns, whose field brought forth plenty, and he said, I'll tear down my barns and build bigger barns. And I'll fill them full of my goods, and I'll say to my soul, so you have many goods laid back for many years, so just sit back and rest and take it easy. And the Lord said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall these things be? That's the scripture that people's going to throw it in your face who are not wanting to prep or who says that it's a sin to prep. Well, listen to what that scripture says again. It says, Boast not yourself of tomorrow, for you don't know what a day will bring forth. You don't know if you'll have time tomorrow to prep or not. You don't know if you'll have time next month to prep or not. I saw an article yesterday that said that 40% of people were planning to start prepping this fall. 40% of people surveyed said they were going to start planning to prep this fall. What if there ain't no food on the shelves this fall? What are you going to do then? You better be prepping now. You don't know what tomorrow holds. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow holds. Get your stuff together now while you can. There's food on the shelves, folks. There's still products to be had in the stores. It's getting scarcer, but it's there. The time to do it is now. Proverbs 28 and 19. He that tilleth his land shall have plenty of bread. Wait just a minute. Tilling land, isn't that prepping for gardens? Isn't that garden prepping? doing stuff that's going to help you have food for the winter and into the next year. But he that followeth after vain persons shall have poverty enough. But he that tills his land will have plenty of bread. Get you some seeds. Put back seeds. These are important things because you may not be able to get them this spring. Order them now. Get online and order them. Um, I may have a couple of links that I can add to the, to the comments in this video where you can order seeds. When I was a child, and I'm just going to go over this real quick and, and try to bring this video to an end, but when I was a child, my father was a very serious man. His father died when he was 10 year old and he kind of took over the man chores of the house and he had to be responsible for a lot of things at an early age. And he was a very serious man, he was a very astute man. and. Uh, he took his job as fatherhood very seriously. He took his job as the provider of our family very seriously. Every year, as far back as I can remember, that he was able to work in a garden, we plowed a garden, and we raised a large garden for our family of seven. We, he had to get garden plowed and tilled. We went over and laid it off in rows. We planted, we hoed and weeded, we picked the beans, we picked the corn, we picked the okra, we took in the cabbage, we took in the broccoli, we took in the tomatoes, we did everything. And when the season came for it, my mother put us boys out 
and we took that big number three wash tub of hers and we kept a fire stoked under it while she canned beans and anything else she could can. And she put back everything she could for the winter so we wouldn't be hungry because we didn't have money to buy all that stuff. My dad couldn't afford all that stuff for the family all year long. He would buy two small piglets at the beginning of the sea, of, of summer and we would feed them all year long and he would grow field corn in the end of that garden. And when it came in, he would start fattening those pigs with field corn. And then the fall of the year when the frost came on, we would have uh, pig killings, they called them. We'd butcher our pigs. And my dad would butcher them up and he would salt them down. We built a smokehouse. Why? That was making preparations to put that meat in. And my dad cured that meat in a smokehouse and we had meat all winter long. My dad built a hen chicken coop and he bought chickens so we could have eggs. He made preparations for all that stuff. People have been making preparations for survival since the beginning of time and there's nothing sinful about it. There's nothing wrong about it. You're not denying your faith in God. You're, you are solidifying your faith in God that he is providing for you, that he is making a way for you to have these things. God is showing mercy to people and saying, listen, there's things coming down the road that's going to be a problem for you. Get ready for them. Get ready for them. Be ready for them. And then when, if the worst happens, you still have your faith in God. You still have put your trust in Jesus Christ. You still have your uh, a peace that only God can give. So it doesn't matter what that part brings. Be spiritually ready, yes. By all means, be spiritually ready. Be repentant before God. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you need to have a repentant heart. The definition of repentance in, in the Bible standard is to have godly sorrow and grief. Grief and godly sorrow before God. It's not trying to change your ways. You can't change your ways. You can't uh, say a sinner's prayer and be baptized and be all right. You have to have grief and godly sorrow before your heart's changed. But anyway, there's nothing wrong with prepping. Folks, and we have, listen, we have a, uh, we have a, a website, backroadsliving.com. I'll put a link to that in the description below that I have this video uh, a, a article to this video on it that you can print out. You can print out all these scriptures. You can print out all these thoughts if you'd like to. And share these with your friends. Share these with your family that are struggling with this. There's people that really struggle with this, that it condemns them if they talk about prepping or think about prepping. They shouldn't be that way. They should not have to worry about that. Help them out. Give them a helping hand. Lend them some hope in this. It's time to do something right now. Waiting till later on in the fall of the year to try to start prepping is just foolish. That's what foolish people do. They wait till it's too late. They don't plow their fields ahead of time. They don't prep for the winter. I've been a foolish man for years, and I've changed in that. Now listen to this scripture. And this is the last scripture I'm going to read you, and I'm going to let it go. 1 Timothy 5, 8. But if any... Provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house. He has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Paul told Timothy to tell this to the followers of Christ. If a man will not provide for his own, and especially those of his own family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. You need to provide for your family. That's your responsibility. Just do it. Don't make excuses. Don't be holier than thou. Don't do any of this foolishness. Just provide for your family. You know you need to. Rely on God to give you provisions that you can do this thing, and you can do it. So here's, here's my little slogan that I, that I tried to think of here yesterday and today. Uh, came to my mind as I was thinking about this prepping video and prepping being a cult. So here we go. 
it says, oh, I'm a prepper, he's a prepper, she's a prepper, we're a prepper, wouldn't you like to be a prepper too? There you go. That's my little slogan for today and something that we should kind of hang on to. Everybody needs to be a prepper, everybody. I think we should prep for the future. Prepping's not a cult. Be careful what you say to people who are prepping. Be careful what you accuse people of doing. Don't, don't say things are wrong when they're not. Don't be an accuser of the brethren. Do your research. Do your prayers. Ask God for a spiritual understanding of his word before you start accusing people of doing things like that and saying they're wrong. It's not wrong, guys, girls. It's just not. So again, I want to thank you for joining us today. If you've enjoyed the video, subscribe to our channel. Like the video. Share us with your friends on social network. Please share this video that others who are struggling or may find it difficult to be uh, preparing for the future. Help them. Share this video with them. Share it on your uh, social media accounts on your Facebook and your Twitter and your Instagram and all that. And don't forget, the greatest preparation you'll ever make is to meet God. So everybody have a blessed day, and God bless you all.